Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, today's maybe that uh, we will could go back the continuation of the philosophy of the Vajrayana because of uh, last time I talk about the anger management. Now today we'll go. I will go back to the again the philosophy of the Vajrayana. Before that, maybe before that, I only did give you the some of the brief introduction or the backgrounds of the Vajrayana. So today, that uh, what will uh, what will I explain you is about the normally. So Vajrayana, when you look at the Vajrayana practices. So most important thing is that sometimes in the Vajrayana practices, it will bring a little bit of the uh, uh, confusion because of the Vajrayana have a lots of the, I mean, the different traditions and uh, different tradition. And uh, why I'm saying is that the last time I saw the one clip, one clip is actually what the clip of the one monk and uh, I know him. I know him means the, I don't, I'm, I'm not close of him. At, I'm not close at him, but the, I uh, I know that that, that monk is from uh, South India, one monastery. So what happened is that that monk and the, he, I saw the clip of him and the, what happened is that the, he was just saying the one prayer front of the one of the protectors, one huge statue. And the, he was explaining that protector is the Mahakala. Do you have, have you heard about the Mahakala, Protector Mahakala? He was saying, oh, Mahakala. So he was saying the Mahabharata prayer. But actually, that statue is not a Mahakala. That is the Hindus, the god called the Pyra. Pyra and the Mahakala look similar, but they're very different. Sometimes even, why I'm saying is that even that monk is a Gishe. Even he have studied the Gishe and he finished the whole of the complete, the, his the philosophy study, but still he got confused. So now that he got confused and he cannot differentiate the Bhairav and the Mahakala. These are two different protectors. Bhairav is the protector of the Hindu protector. It's uh, quite famous in Nepal. But the Mahakala is very famous in the, uh, in the uh, I should say it's more famous in the Tibetan Vajrayana. It's uh, more famous in that protector. So even he is a Gishi and he could not differentiate that. So I saw the clip. It's a video clip and he was explaining, wow, that's a Mahakala. Now I'm saying the prayer, pray well. <laughs> but actually he was just standing in front of the Bhairav statue in Nepal. He was not from Nepal. Anyway, so that's why the, now I come back to the point that the Vajrayana, the philosopher of Vajrayana is, a, there is, there is a one very famous, <clears throat> uh, and I, I should say the one of the Tibetan scholar. He was mid of the 1940. He was very famous, very famous in the two reason. He was a very learned and a very controversial. Controversial means that he started to accuse a lot of the Lamatsun Kaba theories and like this. That's why he became. But I really admire his knowledge and I read a lot of his book. He, he was around the 1940. Even you will get very surprised that the one German person, I don't know that uh, what happened, that person, he but he went to the Tibet and the, he saw the portrait of the, that scholar. So he was so, I mean, the moved, he was so attracted to the, that scholar and the, he made the documentary. You can watch the documentary called The Angry Monk. So he made the documentary and the, he followed the, his footsteps. Anyway, my, my, I will come back to the point that that scholar, okay, that scholar said the one very interesting thing. He said the Hindu Vajrayana and the Buddhism Vajrayana, it's a very, there's a very little difference. It's a very repentant difference. So confusing these two. Once, one point, he's very right. Because now they hear the one thing, last time we are having the Vajra, uh, last time we are having the Vajrayana's the class, but the, when you talk about the Vajrayana, Vajrayana is a very common field, common field between the between the Hindu and the, between the Hindu and the, between Hindu and the Buddhism, very common field, Vajrayana. Vajrayana, Tantra, very common. Vajrayana Tantra is very common. Hinduism and the Buddhism both have a very common field. Now the here the one thing we should understand that what makes the difference 
between the Hinduism Vajrayana and the Buddhism Vajrayana, what makes the difference? That's a very important point. If you look in the Nepal, in the Nepal Buddhist tradition, there are the three different Buddhist tradition in the Nepal. One we call the Mahayana tradition, one we call the Vajrayana tradition, one we call the Theravada tradition, three traditions are there. Now, if they see that someone's wearing the monk's robe, they will say, wow, that's a Mahayana tradition. That's in the Nepal, okay. But they differentiate like that way. But if you go to the other Buddhist country, some of they say, when they see the Tibetan monk, oh, they say that we are the Vajrayana tradition follower. So if you go to the Taiwan, they say that in the Chinese world, it's called the Mi Chao. Mi Chao means a six, secret tradition. They label that when they see the Tibetan monks, they go, oh, that is a secret, secret tradition follower. But that is just a labeling, labeling, okay? Just they give the different labels. But here we will come back to the point, what the difference between the Hinduism Vajrayana and the Buddhism Vajrayana, okay? There are the two very main important points, two very many important points. Number one is a great compassion. Great compassion, we say the great compassion. Great compassion means a compassion toward the all of the sentient beings. Compassion toward the all of the sentient beings. If you look at the Hinduism Vajrayana ancient tradition, okay? Ancient tradition, even in the ancient of the, uh, have you heard, I'm not so sure, have you heard the Vedic civilization? If you look back the five, four or 5,000 years back, when the, they came the, in India, they came the one civilization called the Indus Valley civilizations or the early Vedic civilization near the river in the, and called the Indu river, they got the civilization. So since they wrote a lot of the Vajrayana books, so in that Hinduism Vajrayana books, some oftenly they have mentioned about the animal sacrifice, kill the animal and the offer the animal. Still that tradition still exists in the Nepal. Nepal, some of the, that tradition still exists. Now they kill the animals, especially animals like buffaloes and the goose or like that, they will kill it. But the one thing, please don't mistake me, I'm not judging anything, okay? That I'm just talking about the tradition. So in the Buddh in the Vajrayana of the uh, in the Vajrayana, in the Buddhism, that's a very wrong because the did should be based on the great compassion, compassion toward the, all of the sentient beings, value the every sentient being's life. So this is the one big point. It changes the great compassion. Second is the second difference in the Vajrayana of the Buddhism Vajrayana and the Hinduism Vajrayana. Second difference is the idea of the emptiness. Emptiness. Emptiness is the most important part of the every of the Vajrayana practice. In the Vajrayana practice, when you read the sadhana, they will tell that, oh, you visualize yourself as a Tara, you visualize yourself as a Manjushri. One side, you have to visualize that. One side, after that, you have to also investigate or analyze that, the, who am I? Whether I is really exist or not. I is not existed from itself. It's just, but still, one side that you are thinking that we have to visualize the ourselves as a Manjushri Buddha, ourselves as a goddess, I um, mean, Tara. And uh, after that, also, you have to visualize that, that this Tara, Manjushri Buddha self are not inherently existed. It's all the nature of the empty. That is the main point. That makes the difference between the Hinduism Vajrayana and the Buddhism Vajrayana, the emptiness point, okay? That is a very important. Otherwise, if you look at the protectors and the deity, there are many similarity. Have you heard about the, have you heard about the uh, Yamantaka? Have you heard or not? In the Buddhism, there is one deity, Yamantaka. Mm -hmm. Yamantaka, okay. Yamantaka, synonyms, it's called the Vajra Bhairav. Vajra Vaira is the synonyms of the Yamantaka. When you say the Vajra Vaira, that is a Buddhism in the deity. When you say the Vaira, that's a Hindu deity. Forms are the many things, there are similarities are there. Even the Vajrayana deities and the protector similarities are there. So that's why the lots of people get confused. But the here the main important in the every of the, the Buddhism Vajrayana practice. The most two important things, idea of the emptiness and the great compassion. Great compassion means a compassion toward the whole of the sentient beings. That is the, what you heard a lot of times, no? Compassion toward the human, compassion toward the animals, okay? 
that is the okay the differences okay that is the differences that is the main differences now the purpose purpose of the practice in the vajrayana in the buddhism vajrayana your practice the proposing the vajrayana is mainly not for the self to you benefiting the all of the sentient beings leading the all of the sentient beings out of the samsara sake of that you are practicing okay that is the main purpose first you achieve the buddhahood then you just then you just go on the benefit the all of the sentient beings that is the main i mean the what you call the bodhicitta no mind of the bodhicitta that is the very important in the buddhism in the uh, 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 i mean the vajrayana the buddhist vajrayana buddhism vajrayana okay that's a main importance but the hinduism vajrayana proposed they they will not mention the bodhicitta in their and the more like a ritual side is a very similarity many many similarity in the ritual side how they use the hand mudras so that's a very similar there but the one interesting thing is that the one interesting thing is that the, do you know the vajra let me show you the vajra one second sorry in the vajra and hold the practice okay we use that you, I, i think you have seen that quite not that no vajra okay just let me give me a second okay because this is the some of the important things in the things and just one second so now in the vajrayana practice it's a very important to have that this to i mean the i mean the, what we call that what do you call that an um, Mm, objects of okay objects of the practicing vajrayana i'm not so sure whether i'm translating very properly of okay, object of the practicing vajrayana okay so now the thing is like that when you look at the vajra we call the vajra this is the this vajra is uh, is uh, symbolizing with the body chitta okay when you look at the bell this is symbolizing the emptiness okay vajra i didn't saw that in the hinduism in the hindu tantra hindu vajrayana i didn't saw that in the hindu tantra i didn't see any vajra it's only in the it's uh, having in the buddhist i mean the vajrayana okay this is the two symbols are very important okay now did you understand the vajra means the all the statements about the chitta when you're holding the vajra body you when you hold the vajra you have to hold like this way this way and the, always you have to keep this on the your uh, front of the your heart that means your main practice will be the bodhicitta that means that you are practicing all you are doing for the liberating the all of the sentient beings from the suffering that should be the your final goal that should be the your main practice am i clear yeah okay like this way okay i, I have you seen the before the lamas just holding the vajra and bell no no you have to understand this one okay now this is the bell 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 is the symbolizing that that is symbolizing the emptiness how it symbolizes the emptiness can you hear the sound of the bell sound of the bell if you try to search that the way does the sound of the bells come from whether it's come from the bell or it's come from the what do you call this part i don't know the tongue wow that is a directly you translate from tibetan to when we call the tongue i'm just going to tell that but does it make any sense when you call the tongue okay bell tongue okay i will use but this is a very tibetan word okay we call the bell tongue okay this is a bell tongue so where the sounds come from the bell tongue sounds come from the or oh, in the hollow path of the bell so if you go on a search you won't find it so that's why the emptiness or something like that if you're trying to search the things where does that exist you won't find so it is symbolizing the emptiness and the second part you can see the very hollow empty also this also symbolizing the emptiness okay so that's why the oldness the vajra have to catch by the left hand sorry the bell have to uh, you have to catch by the left hand and the vajra should be on the right hand so that's why it's a bodhicitta and the emptiness these two practices is the most important practice to achieve to achieve the buddhahood so that's why like this way okay so that's why the whenever you catch the but you have to catch the vajra first and the later bell 
But the, here, the one more thing is that again in the Tibetan, in the we have the two different systems. Okay, I'm not so sure whether you have you heard of monastery. They call the uh, uh, Gyutu monastery. Gyutu means the upper upper tantric monastery and the lower tantric monastery. Okay, I will translate like that. Okay, upper tantric monastery and the lower tantric monastery. They have the little bit ritual style will be little different. So I'm from the upper upper monastery. So upper monastery. Tradition always when you have to hold the vajra and the bell, you have to hold hold the vajra first and the bell second. Okay, not the simultaneously. But the lower lower monastery, no lower tantric monastery. What will they do? So they will hold the vajra and the bell all together. Like this one. Right now, I think that you you have heard about the singing bowl. No, it's going to become the quite famous of the just for the do the healings. No, so like that way, you can just hold. You can just ring the bell. Okay, when you are ringing the bell, main important thing is reminding the nature of the empty. Okay, when you heard the sound, when you listen the sound of the bell, no, it should be remind you the idea of the emptiness. Number one. Number two is the mainly. It's also remind you that the always your practice should be based on the bodhicitta and the emptiness. Okay, this is the two very important object in the Vajrayana practice. Okay, now come back. Now in the Hinduism, I never saw the using the Vajra. I never saw that in the Vajra. In the Hinduism, Vajrayana, Hinduism Tantra, I didn't see the Vajra. I saw the bell. I saw the drum. The Lord Shiva, no Hindu, the Lord Shiva, he also use the drum and the, some of the Hindu deities they also have the bow no but I didn't see the Vajra okay Vajra okay now come back to the, this uh, now here at this point can you look at the Vajra now not this Vajra we used to call this Vajra at the nine ages Vajra nine age each does it make any sense age hmm? how do you say it? tip points not tip point how do you age or how do how do you call it Hmm? Usually I see nine point Vajra, no? Nine point. Yeah, usually translated. The point I think. or spoke? I sorry. Spokes. I can't remember no. if I've heard that. I've heard that. I yeah, usually see either, either five point, five point or nine point, point Vajras. Is this you, Is this current? You current? Okay. Okay. So, so, sorry. so, so, sorry. So, can you just so tell me the one? Age, age, or what do you call the point, or what? No, I was saying that I've heard, I've heard like five spoke bars are, like, like one spokes. How do you spell it? Spoke S P O K E, like in a bicycle, you have spokes that go out from the, the hub uh, of the wheel. Okay, spoke. That's, okay. I've heard. Am spoke, I but I've also heard okay. point, like Dirk said. Am I pronouncing rightly spoke? How do, how do yeah, you pronounce it? That's how you pronounce it. Okay. Can I tell you one thing? What did you okay? Okay. So, <laughs> one, one, so one time, I, that time I was in a Reagan. So that time, then, then the, I mean, the next year later, I'm just going flying to the Texas. So they make a fun of the Texas accent, no? Yeah, you got that or something like that. So suddenly it reminded me that. So that was no anyway. So and but when I came to the Texas, I don't feel that much of the accent, the pronunciation different, no. So anyway, anyway, so how do you pronounce it? Yeah, so spoke, isn't it? That's how I pronounce it. And actually my mother's from Texas, so I could say it like that, spoke. <laughs> but the one funny thing when I was in the last time, when I was in the, the you know, Sacramento, and the level was telling me that the California is a land land of the hippies. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, anyway, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay, there's a spoke. Okay, now we we'll look at the spoke. Okay. So, yeah, uh, uh, okay, so now it spoke. Now it's called a nine spokes, okay? Nine spoke is the one thing that the Vajra is an important thing is nine spoke 
it is the symbolizing the nine different of the Kalesha. Kalesha, no, we call the Kalesha. And uh, to eliminate the nine different of the Kalesha, what you need to understand, uh, you need, uh, you need, what you need is a nine different paths. So it is also symbolizing the nine different paths, nine spokes, no, nine spokes. Okay, this is the one of the meanings of that. Okay, nine spokes. Okay, then the old nine spokes. Okay, now you will see that how where is the nine spoke? No, nine spoke. You will see like that. Okay, can you see the center? Can you see one in the center? No, one in the center. Then here you will see the four, little bit bended. No, this, this is bend one. Here is a four. One, two, three, four. So whether you can call the point or spoke or edge or whatever. Okay. The four and the center, they will be the one. So it will become the five, no? So here again, you will see four. In the here, you will center, you already counted before. So we will see that the nine age or nine spoke, okay, of the Vajra, okay? Okay, so that was, okay. So you got it, no? So, okay. So that is the Vajra, okay? Now, when in the Vajrayana practices, it a, it's a, it's a very important step that you should have the Vajra and the bow. Vajra and the bow, it's a, what we call as a Samaya. So through the practicing the Vajrayana, that is a very important to have the Samaya. Because these two, the Vajra and the bow, is a, just like a reminder to you the practice of the emptiness or the practice of the Bodhicitta, okay? These two are the very important to the, as a reminder, okay? So that thing, okay? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay, so okay, this is okay. Now, and the, as I told you, when you sometimes when you when you hold it in the home, you just hold like that, right hand, then left, then you hold like this. Okay, can you see me clearly? Okay, like this, hold like this. Then you have to when you hold the vajra like this way. Okay, you have to catch the vajra like this. And the bell you have to hold like this, then you have to ring the bell like this way, okay? And the, whenever you're ringing the bell, always visualize, you try to visualize the emptiness, okay? Then when you're holding the holding the Vajra, you have to think, visualize that the, your, your practice, main practice should be the Bodhicitta, enlightenment mind, thinking, the benefiting the all of the sentient beings, okay? Like this way, then you ring the bell. Clear, no? So this is the also we call the objects of the object of the samaya. Object of the samaya means of all the vajrayana practitioners. So you need the, this object. He needs a, this object. So we call the object of the samaya. Okay, okay. This is the okay. The bell. Now, now the in the Hinduism, as I mentioned before, I didn't see the vajra at all in the in the Hinduism tantra. Hinduism. Vajrayana, no? Hinduism Tantra, I didn't see the Vajra. It only, it used in the Buddhist Tantra, we use the Vajra. Now, now we'll come back to these points. Now, if you look at the Vajra, even if you look at the Japanese, they also have the Tantra. Now, the, in the Japanese Tantra way, practicing is a very interesting thing is that the, when you practice the Japanese Tantra, in the days of one temple in the Tokyo, in the Japan Tokyo, one of the most ancient the temple that temple in the temple in that temple very amazing thing is that they have a one uh part one part the way the monks they comes and meditate in that part they made meditation the center it makes like a more like a mandala shape mandala shape and also they have a huge like a mandala and when they meditate they will just like a be like in the mandala the mandala they do that so mandala and also they call that the Japanese term they call the zazen. Zazen means the place where you meditate. Zazen is a place where you meditate and when you go to the, that place and the, when you meditate and the, when you fall asleep, I think that the very, I mean, the very, I mean, the famous that the, zen, that the masters, no, they used to beat with the stick, no? But there is a way how they beat it, no? Very nice way. They show me one time I was in the temple and they show me first they will just bow the hand, then they will bring the, uh, they will just hit with the, that stick, no? Then again they will bow down. So just like a, not to meditate or not to uh, get distracted. So yeah, that's the thing. 
but funny joke okay when we are the kid master sometimes we got uh, not do well master beat but the not with the stick they will use the rosary no mala they will read it no rosary mala no beat it no so yeah that mala will be it no so sometimes it's a very funny you no know? so that there's an attitude you no know? there's a, when we are the kid you know, there is a one another kid so he, he, another kids and up my master i think that he didn't study properly he must have hit him with the rosary mala so he got the little bit of mark of the rosary mala and the, when he got the rosary mala there's a so funny that he used to be the so proud and the showing us like a tattoo no <laughs> mark of the rosary and the showing us wow i got like a mark of the rosary <laughs> so that is yeah oh yeah anyway sorry <laughs> jump out of the topic yeah so yeah anyway so so that is the okay so that's why in the why now the in the in the vajrayana in the i mean the in the vajrayana in the japan so the vajra shape is a little different that the, what we are having like this okay the shape is different so it can be the shape can be changed in the different different shape they might have it okay shape is in this is a more like a tibetan one no so we use it more like a very common in the tibetan that that one i um, mean the she the vajra shape okay this is something like that okay now important thing is that uh, whenever you keep the vajra and the bell so you have to keep the vajra always on the left left of the your side okay left and the bell is your right side when you put on the table when you hold it first you hold the vajra then you hold like this then you hold the uh, bell by the your left hand okay am i clear okay now when you hold it don't hold the together okay first you hold the vajra then you hold the bell okay this is more like a upper monastery tradition okay so lower monastery the uh, tradition is holding the two together okay hold it together first in the upper monastery tradition first you hold the vajra then you hold the bell okay so when you keep the vajra and bell you have to keep like this okay can you see me can you see can you see hello yes we can yes, see we can we see, see. We can see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So this is the like that. Okay, when you keep the bajra, your bajra should be on the your left hand side. Bell should be on the your right hand. Okay. When you hold it, then you have hold that like this way. Okay. This is the normally okay tradition. That is a not that I mean the important, but just a tradition. I just want to tell you that the tradition. Okay. So that is the just tradition. Okay. Now the thing is that okay. Now we'll come for the explanation to the bell. Okay. Now in the bell. Now normally you will see that see the one face, no? Face of the, some yeah. Can you see the face? Okay. Mm. Yes. So this is the symbolizing the samaya of the body. This is symbolizes samaya means some rules rules of the body, and the uh, vajra is a more. Uh, then the rules of the day we will say the rules of the body mind speech and the, it's a, in the vajrayana it's a very important for the rules rules means that they are the certain rules certain rules and that that is a very important so that's why the example like in the vajrayana so they we call the 14 downfalls 14 downfalls so this is the like a symbolizing that phase is symbolizing that the physical stuff rules no example like a vajrayana in the 14 downfall one downfall it says like that no? mm, mm, mm. Uh, uh, like a mm, mm. Uh, how to okay uh okay one is uh something like that in the, actually you can see that in the google so i will just want to give you one examples of the vajrayanas the downfall rules yeah okay so not like a, okay not accusing not accusing the vajra vajra brother and the sisters okay not accusing vajra brother and the sister means that when you are the in the community when you are practicing all together the vajrayana so you cannot accuse accuse means the baseless accusation you cannot do the baseless accusation with the, your bro, dharma brother and the sister baseless accuse okay sometimes that when you are not happy with the someone then you will accuse that person a really lot without any prop without any proper reason no baseless accusation no so that's why like that and the vajrayana practitioner you cannot do that you cannot do like that 
if you have a very proper reason and the, if you really think a proper reason if you have a really strong evidence then the, it's a the issue is a very different no normally what we do is the baseless accusation no so in the vajrayana in the also the rules is like that, that if you do some like the baseless accusations for the others that is you are having the one downfall so once you have the downfall once you have the break the rules of the vajrayana again then again, you have to get that the Vajrayana vow again. Take the Vajrayana vow again. So that's why you have to take it Vajrayana vow again, or you have to do the purification, two ways of the purification. So that's why the every of the Vajrayana, when you start the practice, you have to get the Vajrayana vow. So Vajrayana vow, there's certain rules you have to follow. Everywhere, no, there's a rule. No? When, you serve, when you join the school, there's a school rule. When you comes to the, I mean, the country, if the country rules, the other rules are like there, no? In the Vajrayana, I said, reference is that when you break the rules, then what you have to do is that you have to re-receive the Vajrayana vow, or what you have to do is you have to purify that. So purification, again, the purification is like that, that you have to, again, visualize that yourself entering into the mandala, again, receiving the initiation from the that deity. That is a process is a bit long easier if you re-receive the Vajrayana vow it will be much easier in the five minutes you can receive the Vajrayana vow. <laughs> the purification the puja process takes a nearly, nearly hours no so always choose that easy one okay <laughs> so because the way you are re-receiving Vajrayana vow is that you have to think that oh now I will do my best now I will not break it okay that you have to think that so that's why that you have to re-receive the Vajrayana vow okay can that I ask you one question this is Karen yeah 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 um for example, in Kala Chakra, when we, if we do the part where we recite the vows over again, oh. is that a purifying the vows or is that not? Uh, receiving the Kala Chakra vow. Uh, no, when we're I'm doing the Kala Chakra practice and if we recite the vows, all oh. of the root vows, if we recite all of them, are we purifying them at that time or do we have to actually re-receive re the vows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's a different. You have to re receive the vow. Okay. In the, every initiation, every initiation before the beginning, the receiving the initiation, they will give you the vow, the Vajrayana vow. That will get it. You will get it. Right. And the, when you receive the initiation, then you, the initiation, every initiation might have a particular rules, okay? Just like thing like a, there's a one federal rule, okay? That will be the straight rule, no? So, Vajrayana vow is a, something like a federal rule, okay? Now the each of the deity have the like a state rules, okay, state law, okay, things like a state law and the federal law, okay. But uh, when you are in the California, you have to follow the federal rule, no. But you don't have to follow the laws of the Nevada, no. So once you get in the Nevada, you don't have to follow the laws of the California. No? You have to follow the federal law, no. It's exactly, it's the same, okay. The Vajrayana. Vajrayana, there is one law of the Vajrayana, rules of the Vajrayana, and every deity have their own particular rules, okay? So that's why the, and the, some rules can master can add. So they will say, oh, you have to recite this mantra, that mantra, no? So that's why I always say, whenever I give initiation, I will never give any homework. So that is more like a giving the more job to the other, no? So I will just want to do the, some their practice with their own, I mean, the own will, no? Own will, so yeah. So this is like that, okay? So when you pray the rule, <laughs> the initiation, whether, when you, you have to take again the vow. If you receive the one more initiation, then the, you will get the vow. Because every initiation starts with the, after taking the Vajrayana vow, okay? Okay. Thank you. And the, sorry, today we'll stop here, okay? So I have some, I have to, today we'll start a little bit early. I have to do something, okay? Thank you so much. And the next session, we'll have it on the Thursday night as a usual, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, so Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.